With the live action resurgence of both Aladdin and The Lion King this year, it couldn't be a better time to revisit some 90s classics, video games that were based off of the original animated Lion King and the original animated Aladdin. They've been collected in a new game from Disney, who worked in partnership with Nighthawk and Other Ocean, and they've brought them back in this collection. And what's surreal for me, and the reason why I wanted to hold up the Switch box, is that we actually contributed, you know, our company has produced a lot of documentary and behind the scenes footage over the years as we've been doing EP stuff forever. And we talked with Other Ocean and they needed some interviews shot and we shot some of the interviews with the original Aladdin team on this collection. And this is the first time our work has ever been put onto a cartridge and it blows my mind, you know, because it was cartridges that inspired me to create the electric playground and get started on all this. So a little bit of full disclosure here, we worked on some behind the scenes stuff, but that's what we do every day with our material. So it doesn't really factor into how I feel about these games or what I'm gonna talk about here with the collection. I had no idea what they were putting together in terms of content. All we did was do some interviews and stuff, but it's crazy. You can actually watch some of our work on the Nintendo Switch, but this is also available for the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Let's talk about these games for a little bit. Aladdin, if you guys can recall, was one of the games that I thought should have been included with the Sega Genesis Mini because it was a phenomenal Sega Genesis title that really showcased the talent that Virgin Interactive at the time had, and a lot of these guys went off to form Shiny Entertainment and created Earthworm Jim. It really pushed the medium of video games forward because of the rotoscoped animation, and it just looked like you were playing a cartoon. So it was phenomenal. It was an incredible achievement. It's one of those seminal titles for the platform. So yes, of course, we should do some deep dives into this unbelievable cartridge, which is what we get here. What's included with this collection is pretty damn incredible. You don't just get the Sega Genesis version of Aladdin and a Sega Genesis version of Lion King. You get a Final Cut version of Aladdin, because one of the things that the Virgin team had to kind of deal with is they didn't have like every developer making their games, they didn't have enough time to do everything that they wanted to do. So what the Other Ocean team did is they tweaked things and kind of created a final cut version of the experience. So you can play that and it's a little bit more tuned, a little bit more polished with the cameras and stuff like that, which is very cool. You also get the Japanese version of the Genesis game, which might have, you know, a few slight differences. I didn't go super granular on this and, and look at every single difference between every single version. You also get Game Boy and Game Boy Color versions of the Aladdin game that was made, which distills some of the core traits of the Aladdin experience for Genesis, but dumbs it down quite a bit and it slows it down quite a bit. It's not really that fun to play. It's more of like an interesting piece to kind of look at. <laughs> And then you also get an unbelievable museum collection of video vignettes, but also lots of artwork and behind the scenes style guides and things like that that showcase the labor that went into making the Aladdin film, but also the Aladdin video game. And that's where you'll see some of the video stuff that we made as well. And that is almost worth the price of admission alone, just like that. It's incredible. <laughs> Now, one of the things that's true about both of these games, they were incredibly challenging games and they didn't always, you didn't have the ability to save anywhere. That is included now, but one of the cool things that they've done is you can actually watch the games. You can actually watch progress on the games and you can start wherever the video leaves off. So anytime you're just scrolling through and you're watching some clips from the experience, if you get sort of frustrated at a particular level, you can watch the video of it and then you can pick up and play right from where that video leaves off, which is incredible. And that's one of the things that Google Stadia is kind of promising with its integration with YouTube. It's mind bending. You know, you're watching a video and then says, oh, you want to quit and just uh, start playing from right? It's so damn cool. So you can do kind of the exploratory deep dive into the content here and what these developers were thinking of, which is great. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So you get the Genesis version, you get the Final Cut version, and you get the Japanese Genesis version or the Mega Drive version of Aladdin, plus the Game Boy variants in the museum and the watch video content. With the Lion King, it's a little bit different. You get the Super Nintendo game, and you get the Sega Genesis game, and you get a Japanese version of the Super Nintendo game, and you also get the Game Boy and Game Boy Color versions of the games. Not too much disparity or difference. I, and honestly, I can't tell if it's Game Boy Color or if it's like a Super Game Boy version of the original. It's so blocky and chunky, those old handheld versions, that I really couldn't tell much difference between any of them. Very tough to play after the elegance that you see on display on the Genesis and Super Nintendo code. They did an incredible job with The Lion King as well, and it was Westwood that worked on this game back in the day, so you get little video clips with Lewis Castle. They don't have new interview content on The Lion King stuff. They have some of the classic interviews that came out back then with Disney employees and Westwood employees, which are great to watch as well, you know? There's a really cool desire to kind of honor the history and the effort and the work, and I loved all that. You also get all of the art assets and stuff that you can cycle through, and through all of that artwork, there's actually kind of like a running history with all kinds of data data and textual information that really places you in context of what everybody was kind of trying to achieve. And again, The Lion King is a very solid game. It's a beautiful platform action adventure game, but it's incredibly difficult. And I think it's made more so by the fact that you're playing a lion. And this is kind of akin to some of my criticism of the uh, early Spyro games, that sort of reconfiguring in your mind of a character that takes over like horizontal space makes things trickier. You know, it's not like just you're playing a human character that's got a little bit more verticality and you can you know, judge your butt bounces a little bit easier because Mario trained us how to do that and Sonic as well. But when you're playing a lion, you take up space. And so when you're jumping on the bugs and the enemies and trying to fight your way as you finally grow up a little bit as Simba and you have the ability to swipe at different creatures, you just take up more physical sprite space on screen and I constantly was getting hit. The collision detection was excruciating. And also judging the jumps and finding out where you could clamber up. It's not, to me, as fun or as elegant as Aladdin is. <laughs> You also can surf through the soundtracks for all of the games as well, which is kind of crazy. It's very noticeable that the Super Nintendo music of The Lion King was better, and I think the visuals were a little bit nicer as well. There's more voice work in the audio, but the visuals, I think the fidelity of the Super Nintendo version of The Lion King was better. The glaring omission here is that we don't get the Capcom-developed Aladdin game for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> that would have put this collection Honestly, at the 10 level, because the Aladdin game for Super Nintendo is great as well. I still think the Genesis version is a better game, but it's a real missed opportunity that it's not collected in here. I don't know what happened. Uh, you know, clearly a lot of the rights issue. Th this would have been a complicated thing to put all of this stuff together and to collect all of this old archival information. But man, this is how you do it. This is how you honor past work. It's going to cost you probably as much money to go out and find just the cartridge for either one of these games as it would to get this whole collection. I think it's extraordinary that we get to play a game like this on a system like the Switch where you can carry it around with you. I also checked this out on the Xbox One, and we're talking about sprite-based games from the 16-bit era, so it's not like you're going to see a massive noticeable improvement, but certainly the framing around the screen, if you want to add the frame, you can take the frame right off. You can also add filters if you want to. They're going to be a little bit crisper running off of Xbox One architecture, but it's, it looks fantastic on the Switch. That's kind of my preferred way to play it, partially because there's a cartridge version. And if I had my pick, I would choose to pick up the cartridge because there's, there's that one-to-one -one connection. These were games that came on cartridge, so it's really cool that you can play them on a tiny cartridge on your tiny system that you could play in portable mode and also on handheld mode. <laughs> No matter what machine you have, this is definitely a worthwhile pickup, and kudos to everybody involved. They worked their butts off to really honor this incredible work, and I'd love to see a lot more of this. There are tons of great classic games and lots of incredible developers out there that deserve, you know, our appreciation and their time in the spotlight a little bit to talk about what they were creating because they were not just building cool games, they were kind of defining 
what video games meant for us. And when you play a game, especially like Aladdin on the Sega Genesis, you just recognize the extraordinary leaps and bounds that everybody took. Yeah! Wonderful collection. If you're as big a fan of these titles as I am, you're going to adore it. I'm gonna give the Aladdin Lion King collection from Disney a nine out of 10.